What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kizuna Clash and we're specifically talking about the 10 star difficulty. So the normal Kizuna is what we're looking at today. I'll be making a separate video talking about the Super Boss Kizuna. So we'll go through a couple of preparation teams for that. But today we're going to be looking at two separate teams for each different type variation of these bosses go through what you should be expecting and some team comps that you can use in order to get around the gimmicks at hand. Before we get into that though, I do want to discuss some of the information that was given to us here on the actual Kizuna page. It does mention that we can go ahead and get our hands on two additional copies of the Goldie Roger Super Evolution Skull. It mentions from box five and box six, you can get two more copies. So if you are a little short in terms of getting the skulls to super evolve him, you can go ahead and pick up the skulls there. And of course the Super Evolution Skulls for Sugar are also gonna be available, which is gonna be a bunch of fun. That's pretty much all I really wanted to talk about here at the start. Just to make sure that you guys know there are going to be skulls available. Make sure to play the Kizuna if you haven't done so in terms of uh, evolving that Roger. Because that's very, very important to do so because his abilities are absolutely wild if you guys haven't seen the showcase video yet. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the preparation for this upcoming Kizuna Clash. The first boss we're having a look at is the Int variation where Driven, Free Spirit, and Cerebral will all receive cooldown reduction. Battle 2, there's going to be 5 turns of defense up and you're inflicted with 10 turns of recovery bind. But the annoying thing here is, is that when you kill the boss on stage 2, you're inflicted with 20,000 damage. And then when you reach the boss stage, you get inflicted with a health cut as well. And then there is also another defeat action of 30,000 damage. The whole focus around here is you need to make sure you have enough damage or enough HP to tank the damage at hand. It's going to be a lot. In terms of the gimmicks on the final boss stage, there's a weird immunity where you can actually apply poison effects, you can delay the boss, you can ignite the boss, and you can also inflict a defense down. So there's actually a couple of different ways that you could go around getting through this boss fight in terms of the conditional boosts. There's also paralysis, five turns of paralysis, and five turns of blue shield defense up. And then after level 30, there's going to be five turns of attack down as well so there's actually quite a lot of debuffs here we're using goldie roger with the sub of shanks to proc the super type to guarantee us those matching slots which is really good in terms of getting around some of the other gimmicks though now there is going to be defense up on the two different stages now in my experience i have found that the defense up on being being on two stages typically isn't too bad but in this instance here we are going to have ways to get around it shanks this v1 shanks is special now my one is level limit broken so you don't have to have the limit break effect but the special sets defense to zero and it also gives you a full board of size slot so you don't specifically need the level limit break because the base special will still do the same thing Another thing as well is that we have the Frenoske because his special will enable it so that when we hit two perfects on stage two, when we move into stage three, that is going to apply a defense set to zero and give you a conditional boost against enemies that are inflicted with defense down. So you'd want to be using both Shanks and also Frankie on stage two and probably Roger as well. If you don't have the level limit break to get the attack boost, you can use a Roger super class as well to get matching slots. In terms of the final stage though, Defense up is dealt with due to Frenoske. The paralysis will be dealt with via the Viola, and she also gives us an orb boost. It's not a very big orb boost, but it's an orb boost nonetheless. Um, and she'll uh, she'll do with the uh, the attack down, which is good. And then the paralysis, should I say, is dealt with via the Hawkins. He deals with the five turns of that, and he also has a really cool effect where he nullifies damage taken from Strength, Quick, and Int characters for one turn. So he's very, very key to the strategy as we can use him for utility purposes, but also use it to tank the 30,000 damage that would be inflicted to the crew. So this is not a, an optimal team, I would say. This is a more quote-unquote accessible style team using Roger. You don't have to have your own Roger. You could use someone else. You know, you could use uh, Sai Yamato if you wanted. Um, there's just a couple of options that you could go with, but this seems like an, an okay option if you don't have many available characters. But uh, let's have a look at a different team comp. Looking now at a little bit of a different team composition, this is utilizing a lot of the characters on the boosted list here. Surprisingly, Roger's actually not listed as a boosted character in this Kizuna. Not sure if that's a mistake or not, but the way that we're dealing with this is by using one Robin special on Battle 2, and then another Robin special on Battle 3, we can actually deal with both stages of defense up, which is pretty nice. It doesn't completely remove the defense up though, it's only an 80% reduction, but in my opinion, I think this will be enough because, you know, Robin will be a really useful character in this Kizuna, at least I would think so. So I'm I'm, I'm just assuming here that there's going to be good enough. I mean, with all of these damage buffs, it should be fine. 
Uh, another thing that's kind of interesting is that you are inflicted with the recovery bind on battle two. Now, Robin does have a potential ability that does resist recovery bind by seven turns. So if you have two Robins, you can actually remove it completely. The rest of the characters on the crew do not have recovery bind. You could just have another character on the crew that removes it by three, plus Robin seven will remove it, which is actually pretty decent. So that you can actually get some type of pinch healing effects activated, which is pretty nice. Or alternatively, you could have a ship that gives you additional healing. There's multiple ways around that. Then when you reach the final stage, the paralysis is dealt with by Nami as a captain to give her a little bit of additional charge. Uh, it gives her an additional 30 turns of charge. She gets max special at the start of the quest. The, I think she'll actually have the max special charge when you actually use her special. So you'll get like the 2.5 chain boost, the 3000 base attack. You'll get her conditional boost as well. And you can stack both one, one Robin and also the Nami conditional boost simultaneously. So that's already just a lot of damage. You have Roger for an attack boost. You can get rid of the attack down by the Sanji special, I believe it is. I think he actually gets rid of the attack down. He does. Uh, Robin superclass for an orb boosting effect, which is fantastic. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like, the, it just deals with everything here. We do have the Brook support attached to Nami to give us additional damage reduction if we so need it. Um, I'm not too sure if I'm going to be using this team exactly, but this is just by using, you know, obviously all of the higher point booster characters to get through the quest. Having a look at the next boss now versus the quick variation, so we ideally want to be building dex teams here. Int, quick, and dex all receive cooldown. Battle 2, there's going to be 5 turns of damage threshold, which is pretty annoying to deal with. On the boss stage, there's going to be, once again, the same type of immunity where you can apply poison, you can delay, you can ignite, and you can also defense down. There's also 8 turns of despair, 5 turns of rainbow shield, 5 turns of paralysis after level 30, and also after level 30, the despair will get a plus 1. So it's going to be 6 turns, or should we say 9 turns of despair, 6 turns after the sockets. So immediately the despair is removed via the captain ability of Yamato. Remember, Yamato will be boosting the attack of both striker and free spirit characters. We're using Kid as the captain here because it's a more free-to-play centered option for a lot of people out there in the community. Now, ideally what we do is, is with 6 plus Kid, we can use his special ability on battle 2 to remove 5 turns of the uh, threshold so we can use his special battle 2 give us an attack boost and it does give us those super bomb slots so it would be ideal if we could just consume as many of those as possible so that when we reach battle 3 we use Yamato special and it actually gives us you know the um the Wano slots which are obviously super useful to have so if you if you're able to consume some of those slots it definitely makes things a lot better for you in the long run um but anyways you can use the super class special as well the super type special of uh, of kid to give you the slots and then you know obviously use the special of kid do lots of damage you can do lots of really cool shenanigans now the rainbow shield luckily can also be removed with kid because of his captain ability right near the bottom it says that if you consume a bomb or a super bomb slot with kid he will remove five turns of damage reduction. So that's actually like pretty insane that he has an effect that can do that. I'm not too sure if that includes the level limit break version of Kid plus the six plus. I don't actually remember off the top of my head. Now the five turns of paralysis we can remove with Nami. This is the old school version one Nami. A very good special, actually. It gives us a two, a two times all boost and a 1.75 color affinity. Um, and it also removes three turns of paralysis. So that with this Brook support will actually be able to remove all turns of the paralysis just by launching her special. The rest of the characters on the team kind of supplement. So we've got this Bato here. He's really cool because he can give us a damage reduction effect and a chain lock with double special. And remember when we use Yamato special for the attack boost, we will be getting the damage reduction based attack boosting effect. So this gives us a free 1.7 damage increase, which is ridiculous. We have Law, which is a I don't know why Law's on the team. He's kind of just here just to trigger the super type of kid. That's basically the only reason why he is here. And then we also have this Jinbei, which is a self-proccing defense down conditional boost. That's literally the only reason why he's here. So a kind of an obscure team, but I actually think this team's going to do absolutely crazy in terms of damage potential. But it all comes down to using Kid Special Battle 2, keeping a bomb or a super bomb slot on him so that when you use his uh, tap, you can actually remove the damage reduction, which is kind of important. So looking more at a heavier, pay to win team we've got a lot of the new year's characters once again yamato friend to get rid of the despair the really cool thing about using nami once again if we're inflicted with paralysis she can remove it she gets fully charged there's also going to be the despair which yamato deals with and the damage reduction on the last stage which nami also deals with so nami and yamato are just doing absolutely crazy stuff 
on the final stage. Then, of course, on Battle 2, there is the five turns of Threshold. Now, there are lots of ways to get around that. In my team composition that I'm showing off here, the Kazuna Rare Recruit Luffy does remove it, as well as provide an attack boost. But, of course, there are lots of options you can use instead of him. We have the, the Robin once again to get a conditional boost that can stack with Nami. And then we, the last unit here literally can be anything, but I'm just using the, the Zoro and Sanji character because it can inflict increased damage taken, which I think is not actually going to get inflicted anyway, but it does provide a color affinity boost, which is pretty solid for our deck's characters. Again, like, pretty flexible in terms of spots, because Nami and Yamato together deal with this stage very comfortably, so lots of flex spots for sure, if you're lucky enough to have the New Year's characters. And now we can talk about the final boss, the 10-star difficulty of the Psy variation, where shooters, free spirit, and driven characters receive cooldown. Battle 2, there's going to be 8 turns of despair, which gets knocked down to 5 obviously and on the boss stage the same condition in terms of the immunity buff so you can still do a poison conditional delay ignite or defense down there's also going to be five turns of threshold which gets bumped up to six after level 30 five turns of attack down five turns of damage reduction so this is actually the most annoying fight in terms of the gimmicks there are a lot of defensive effects on the final stage of the psi variation i might be missing something in terms of a character that just deals with everything at once but you know there's actually a lot of gimmicks here that i haven't really placed a finger on in terms of of one character specifically that's going to help you way more than a lot of other characters but uh, let's just run down the uh, quote-unquote accessible team that I have here for you guys today in terms of dealing with the despair we're going to be using this rare recruit who's who um, so he uh, the whole team is going to be driven focused by the way he removes the despair adjacent slots matching two times attack boost it kind of helps you deal with battle too when you reach battle 3, there's a lot of different things that can actually occur here. Ideally, you'd want to be using Sasaki first. Sasaki with the double special launch will be able to remove all of the attack down that's inflicted to the team, which is really, really solid. Then what you can do is, is activate the special ability of Kaido. Now, Kaido is an absolute monster. His special will give you the matching slots and the massive attack and all boosting effect to your driven and striker characters. Then, after the fact, you can go ahead and use the special of Killer. Killer is going to remove all of the rainbow shield that the enemy inflicts after level 30 and also says that if you have six driven characters on the crew you get a 2.25 color affinity boost so that stacking with Kaido that gets actually buffed by a 0.25 which becomes a 2.5 color affinity boost from that killer and also being a utility special then the final character you can use is katarina devon because she will remove six turns of damage threshold which is what occurs after level 30 and delays the enemy and applies a two times conditional boost and if you have an attack boost you buff it by 0.25 so this team once again is going to go absolutely hardcore crazy bonkers to the wall this is going to be a very very good team despite the fact that it has a lot of characters that i would consider to be accessible blackbeard was free to play due to pirate rumble and not even using his special he's just kind of here because his higher stats um, and obviously he's got a really good multiplier captain. Then you got free to play Sasaki, free to play Killer, free to play Devon, and then an old rare recruit in Who's Who. Like this team actually should do really good getting around all the gimmicks with massive damage potential. Now, a slightly different team is if you actually have your own Kaido or your own version of Super Tandem Big Mom, you can run a team such as this. Remember, we didn't even use the special ability of, um, of Blackbeard at all. So by using a team like this, we can actually get even more damage because Big Mom's special is like absurdly strong. And also, you know, we don't get a color affinity that is as good as what we had in the previous team because we'd be using Big Mom's super type in order to get the color affinity, which is not buffed by Kaido's captain. So it is going to be a 2.25 color affinity boost however we can actually get big mom's conditional boost and we can get her base attack boost which just gives you more damage in general um, and also ultimately you can get the super tandem which is kind of nuts so you need to hit with a couple of driven or powerhouse characters then big mom and kaido to get the the big boost as well so this team will do more damage in the long run um, but it is a little bit harder to build because you need to have your own kaido or your own big mom so either way these two teams are going to be pretty awesome and the fact that it uses like characters that are not super hard to get in my opinion is pretty amazing so uh the versus side fight while it does have a lot of gimmicks kaido carries it really hard in terms of applying damage to the crew this final team that i'm showing off i believe should work as a one team versus all 
Obviously, the friend captain is not meant to be this Barto exactly. It is going to be the new Barto that just debuted during the Kizuna Clash Sugo Fest. Now, this team is a fully driven focused team as Driven receives cooldown on two of the three fights. On the other fight, Int, Quick, and Dex all receive cooldowns. So everyone will receive maximum cooldowns on all of the fights. Now, in Battle 2, on one of the fights, we have to deal with Defense Up, which is why we have the, the Dofi. The Dofi here is going to be able to do uh, Double Special Launch to remove two turns of Defense Up on each launch. Bellamy Support to remove an additional two turns, so that's perfect. He also gives Color Affinity for that stage too, so it means Barto will be hitting super effectively. The rest of the team hopefully has enough damage to kill. We'll see how things go. And, of course, Barto is the friend captain on the last stage of most of these fights here, or all of them. He can apply the Conditional Boost. He can remove six turns of despair and he can remove six turns of damage threshold on the last stage and he's just a really good character as well as applying damage nullification which is able to tank the death hit on the versus int fight we uh we're gonna have to deal with damage reduction on some of the fights as well which is why we have killer and because we have a full team of six driven characters we can actually get the 2.25 conditional or color affinity should we say kaido as a captain will buff that to 2.5 color affinity which is so good and then of course we have to deal with attack down on certain stages which is why we have the sasaki and because he can also give a conditional boost realistically sasaki could be replaced with another character but ultimately he should work relatively okay and uh we have we'll have to do with um, paralysis on some of the fights which is why we have the dex zora also having dex zora on the team uh, on this position means he'll get a wano slot so he'll actually hit really really hard versus the quick fight of course the friend captain bato will be super effective against all types so that he's always going to be hitting hard no matter what I could try and squeeze a Psy character on the team, but remember that Psy characters do not receive cooldown on versus quick fight, and it is kind of hard to, to use characters or build characters in a way so that you have cooldown on some fights and not on others, but still making the team succinct and work. It should be okay, even though Bato is going to be the only character hitting super effectively versus the quick fight, but if any of you guys uh, point out any flaws with this team, I would love to see it down below in the comment section just to make sure that I can get this team better. If it does get updated, as time progresses i'll likely make a community post about it so definitely stay tuned for that but with all that being said that's pretty much all of the information that we have today in terms of building teams for the upcoming kizuna clash really hope you guys have enjoyed this one and of course i will be uploading a separate video talking about the super bosses in greater detail so make sure to stay tuned for that that is going to wrap it up for me thank you so much for watching the video if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below on that guys i will see you guys within the next video